Tenable Network Security, creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jumpstart your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution. For more information, visit them on the web at tenable.com. ProXPN is the leading VPN service, offering free accounts, excellent premium features, and an outstanding commitment to privacy and security online. Use the discount code WEEKLY and save 50% off for life. NetSparker, the developers of desktop and cloud-based web application security scanners that enable you to automatically identify vulnerabilities in your web applications and web services. NetSparker scanners employ a unique and dead accurate vulnerability scanning engine that automatically verifies vulnerabilities with a proof of concept. For more information, visit them on the web at netsparker.com or email them at contact at netsparker.com. Hi, everyone. This is Paul Sidorian with Security Weekly. We're, of course, broadcasting live from G Unit Studios in Rhode Island. <clears throat> Excuse me. And for the longest time, I thought that safe mode was indeed safe. It turns out some researchers from CyberArk Labs have uh, proved me wrong and shown us how safe mode can be used against you. Uh, we have two of the researchers here with us today. Kobe and Doran are here. Um, Kobe and Doran, why don't you uh, say hi and, and give a, a quick introduction for yourselves for our audience. Hi, I'm Kobe and I lead uh, one of the cyber research group in CyberArk. And I'm Doran, I am the team leader of the malware research in CyberArk. So my first question is what started you down the path of looking into safe mode? A lot of us in security, we think about what our next project is going to be. How did you guys really like all sitting around and be like, you know, we should attack safe mode. How did that come about? We, are, we always look for uh, new ways, uh, new vectors, new vulnerabilities to exploit. Uh, uh, this is uh, how, de how our day is starting, ending, uh, and we think about it during our nights. So basically 24-7. Hmm. Well, it was very creative. Now, when you first hear of a safe mode attack, when I first started hearing about the, uh, this attack vector, I thought, well, someone's going to need to be physically present to reboot the system, press the keys, and enter into safe mode. But that's not necessarily the case. So, yes, you're right. It's not the case. Uh, a remote attacker can activate safe mode from, uh, from remote, actually, and run a code uh, if, even if it's not uh, physically on the system. Now, the... <clears throat> the rights that the uh, attacker needs are administrative pri privileges uh, on that. And, of course, you know, some would say, well, that, that's a protection method, as, as we all know, probably not so much. Um, but what, what, how do you, like, enable safe mode and then reboot? Is it a registry change? Yeah, it's the safe mode setting is not in the registry. It's in a secret partition. It's not accessible uh, uh, through regular measures. It's called the UFI, uh, uh, EFI uh, partition. Mm -hmm. And if, if you want to change it manually, you need to WoW access this partition. You can also change it by doing MS config or a, a, a command line. <clears throat> a lot of, uh, in fact, we just spoke on our uh, last show about how easy it is to get administrative access uh, to machines and how passwords are typically or some kind of authentication problem uh, is typical. So that's one of the reasons why this problem really uh, intrigued me. Um, so once, uh, so you can reboot the system or wait for the user to reboot the system. So what can be bypassed in safe mode? Well, it's mainly two, two things. The first one is Microsoft uh, security measures, like uh, VSM. Microsoft introduced uh, 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 last year their credential guard. It's a very good solution. Uh, prevent you from stealing uh, information from the ERSAS process. Mm -hmm. And the other, the other vector is disabling other security measures, third-party security measures, such as anti-malware, antiviruses, and so on. So the uh, VSM was the technology put in place by Microsoft to essentially protect from pass the hash uh, exploits, correct? Right, pass the hash and to prevent you from stealing the hash in the first place. 
Excellent. It, it goes back to what I previously mentioned about credentials being typically the weakest link in organizations. Um, so that that's certainly interesting. Now, are there any uh, endpoint protection tools that like still work in safe mode or are pretty much all of them disabled? So basically, there is a type of them that works in safe mode, but not in all cases of safe mode. So in safe mode, there are uh, some different types type of safe mode. There is the one type of minimal safe mode, there is the network safe mode, and the alternate shell safe mode, but we, we know some of the security measures use the network safe mode, uh, but not the minimal one. So we, we didn't see some product that uh, sits all around safe mode and protects from, uh, from it. Now, in your blog post, you talk about comm objects and how they aid in the attack. How, do, how does that work? So com object is a it's a piece of code that helps to two different uh, software to communicate between them, and we found out that Explorer Exe inside safe mode loads uh, com objects and uh, uses to to help the user to to find more uh, files and to uh, parse and icons, and we found out that if we let the explorer in safe mode to load our own com object we planted there uh, from the first place we can run a code inside safe mode and that's done through the the rendering of icons as you mentioned in your post yeah yeah so this is a lot there's a lot of uh, com objects that uh, explorer.exe can load um one of them is is the one we check we test in our lab and he was doing the, the parsing of the uh, icons. <clears throat> Very cool. Um, so <clears throat> when I was envisioning this attack, it was kind of interesting uh, as I was reading about it. I was like, well, so if you reboot a system back into safe mode and then the user gets back at their desk and it's in safe mode, they're going to notice that their desktop isn't, isn't quite the same. And uh, you guys both kind of thought of that scenario. So <laughs> tell us what you did to get around that. Yeah, so there are two scenarios, basically. There is the one, the, the victim doesn't know uh, the, the system or the machine goes to, went into the safe mode and, and went back uh, into the normal mode, which means there is a back-to-back -back restart. So this is the one scenario if you want to uh, um, use the pass the hash attack, this is the vector, the vector we will choose. The, the, the vector that the, the victim doesn't know the, the machine went into safe mode, execute the attack, and back uh, to the normal mode. And the second scenario, the second uh, the scenario which we want to steal credential, this is the scenario we need to uh, to to manipulate the, the the victim that he thinks that that he will think uh, the, the screen it's not safe mode screen. And you ha we have the possibility, and we do our research in our lab, and we demonstrate how we can show uh, the user uh, a really normal screen like the normal uh, mode. So are there endpoint protection solutions, whether from Microsoft or third-party vendors, that will operate in safe mode? Did you discover any of such tools? We saw several that are working in min in uh, network safe mode, mm -hmm. not in the minimal one. So there are none that work in the minimal safe mode. Yeah, we haven't saw uh, any of them. <clears throat> so given that, uh, what can we do to mitigate this attack? Well, you need to prevent user from running as admin uh, for uh, in the first place, uh, but you can also monitor security event log uh, uh, to see specific uh, 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 events. And will that security event log just tell me machines that go into safe mode or are there other measures that you can look for as well? You can decide that uh, the um, specific actions are sensitive action and um, enhance the audit that security event log is performing. Also a new feature uh, uh, produ uh, introduced by Microsoft last year. Uh, but in, in, this, uh, uh, in this, this, in the security event log, we published a, a, 
a month or two months ago, a, another article saying that we found a way to bypass the security event log, which is till now considered to be a, an evidence in a federal court. So we found a way to change events and to delete events without leaving any trace. That's interesting. Now, have you published that that research as well? Yeah, you can <clears throat> find it in our uh, blog. That's that's really that's really interesting. Um, so, is there a way to you can't disable safe mode, can you? Right, it's an infrastructure issue. It's uh, with it's. We have a safe mode since '95, and it's it looks like it's, it's here for, to stay. And you cannot disable safe mode, but you can prevent users from changing the settings, saying that the machine will go to safe mode in the next boot. Oh, I see. So you can't stop someone who has physical access to the machine from getting it to safe mode, but you can disable it in the operating system such that you can't run those commands and you can't access that um, uh, partition and, and all that thing. Right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> That's interesting. Is there uh, EUFI or U UEFI? I always get that wrong. Is there bio settings that? Well, it's actually not BIOS. It is the e e EUFI. Did I say that right? EUFI, right? Um, UEFI. UEFI. Thank you. Yeah, but the partition called EFI. So, are there settings in that to prevent safe mode? Because I know the the uh, UEFI has certain protections and is linked to the operating system. But for example, in rebuilding a, a Windows system here uh, for our, ourselves in our studio, I was reading where it can actually store the product key so that if you do need to reinstall, it just reads your product key from the UEFI. Right, right. There are several things that you can uh, configure from the Windows state. And there are several other things that you can configure only from the BIOS state. Uh, also, a funny point here, we saw that you cannot change uh, the boot to uh, uh, do a legacy boot uh, instead of a secure boot, which VSM is relying on secure boot. And in this case, if you change another settings in the BIOS, uh, saying I want a, a uh, some kind of legacy device to be activated, it will automatically change the, the settings to uh, uh, bypass the security boot. So it's another uh, issue. That's that interesting. Found. I actually ran into that very same problem. Uh, I had obviously physical access to the machine, but I plugged in a Kali Linux uh, thumb drive to boot off of, and it was like, no, I, I can't boot off of that. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, I, like, I, you're my computer. You do what I say. And I had to go in and disable the, the secure boot uh, option. So yeah. that's pretty funny. <clears throat> um, so any other recommendations for organizations um, to protect themselves from, from this particular attack vector? For now, at that moment, the only thing that we can say is that take admin permission from users and manage the uh, privileges uh, uh, that you give to the users. Um. <clears throat> So do, now, is cyber, tell me a little bit about CyberArk Labs. So CyberArk employs you, and it sounds like you, you folks just to get to like sit around and think of a crazy things and, and do research, which sounds like a really awesome job, by the way. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, I think that we have the, the best job ever. Uh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can break things, and uh, we are getting paid for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting, and I think that your uh, the company CyberArk is in a very uh, unique position uh, to be able to help with this problem too. And I'm seeing vendors in that area become uh, more players in the security market because when we talk about this attack, for example, and lots of other different kinds of attacks that are all taking advantage of some kind of authentication or authorization in the network, um, products in that space can certainly help. So I know you work for CyberArk and you're recommending that people manage their credentials, but no, that really is <laughs> what we're saying, uh, not just the folks from CyberArk. It's very, very important uh, to, to manage that because that's really the only way um, that you're going to add some security that makes a difference uh, in your networks when we talk about attacks like this. Right, right. You can see that in every uh, serious attack that occurred in the past few years, 
stealing the credential and misusing those credentials was part of the attack. Central part of that. <clears throat> so uh, have you heard of or seen this safe mode attack being used in the wild? No. Okay. Maybe after we air this segment, we might, <laughs> which is the <laughs> unfortunate thing when we talk about, uh, you know, interesting attack vectors, uh, they end up getting picked up uh, by both good and bad people, as it were. But um, this was great information. I want to thank you both uh, for appearing on the show and talking about uh, this very interesting uh, issue. I have sent this uh, information to uh, our penetration testing team, so I'm sure they'll be reading about it and, and be very excited about it as well. So again, thank you both very much for appearing on Security Weekly. Thank you very thank much you for much. having us.